Time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street with financial expert Rob Black. Rob, good morning. Markets look a bit mixed right now. The Nasdaq's positive, but the Dow is not. It's off by more than 200 points. What are you seeing, and how do you think it's going to pan out for the for the month? Good question. The month is going to be good for September, and that is typically the worst month of the year for the stock market. Mm. So we're almost finished and it's been a good run, probably because the Fed cut 50 basis points. Tomorrow we're gonna get a jobless claims number that we're focused on. There is some worry in the back of people's brains on Wall Street that the economy is slowing, jobs are, numbers are getting weaker. Uh, people are losing their jobs, they lose their jobs, they lose their paycheck, they lose their paycheck, they lose their ability to support the economy and buy things from companies. And then earnings could go down and you can see how that would be bad for stocks. So that's um, <clears throat> just, we're up 20% for the mm -hmm. year for the S&P 500. I'd kind of like to lock these gains in and go away for three months. Yeah. Can't do it, but I'd kind of like, like to. Yeah. Well, with the Fed cutting the rate, it looks like uh, we're getting a little boom back in mortgage refis. I'm seeing that. Yeah, and I think this is great for the long term on the economy. We saw mortgage refis surge 20%. Um, what's no, noticeable about that is we've gone down from about the 7% levels to about 6.13. And ultimately, James, if one of our viewers does a refi, mm -hmm. they'll probably have a couple extra hundred bucks in their, their you know, uh, budget at the end of the month. And that finds its way into healthcare. It finds its way into retail. It finds its way into food. It finds its way into savings. So refis are a good long-term way of cleaning up the balance sheet of the American consumer for the next 10, 20 years if they do the refi. Um, I do think lower rates are coming in 2025. So if you can afford your payment, maybe you can put off six to nine months and wait for slightly lower rates, but 5% is as low as I see them going. Okay. Well, going in the other direction up is uh, college tuition. That's our first official story today. So walk me through, it's in your loser column for obvious reasons. You know, we don't, yeah. we don't like to see the cost of college continue to climb. Yeah, um, this was particularly tied towards dormitory rooms mm -hmm. and room and board uh, are going up 37% uh, over the last 10 years. So they've gone from $5,400 for a room up to $7,453. Um, if you factor in room and board, where you're getting that food is board, uh, $12,770. So add it all up with tuitions, the average student in America is paying $35,551 to go to college for one year. Uh, again, that's tuition plus room and board. It's a lot of money and you know, room and board, you could kind of understand it going up. We've seen food inflation. We've seen the cost of apartments go up. We've seen the cost of electricity go up. So it's all hitting. It just, it does feel a little bit on the rude side. Now again, college tuition for public schools is still around $11,260 for a year. Uh, privates around $35,000. So there's ways to save a little bit of money, but this was a little shocking in the report that I was looking at. Uh, a, a triple in Berkeley, that's one of our audiences, mm -hmm. um, a triple is going for $12,675 a year. And that's only eight months of the year. And you're also, a triple means you're living with two other people. So right. it's three people in one room, no privacy. Right, everybody's got to share a bathroom. That never yeah. goes well, <laughs> never goes well. And bedrooms. Yeah, right. So uh, okay, let's talk about uh, the EV market. The, this year was supposed to be a big one. Uh, the numbers are starting to roll in. We're starting to get a better sense of how the year's shaping up and what are you finding? Yeah, disappointment. Mm -hmm. uh, 2024 was supposed to be the year of the EV made into mainstream, but what it's turning into is the year of retreat for electric vehicles. Last year, uh, the year we sold 1.2 million electric vehicles. That's 7.6% of all cars. So those numbers are getting better. I remember yeah. when they were at 2 or 3%. Right. Um, growth was expected to be 42% year over year. Now it's expected to be 11% year over year. Um, hybrids are stealing the thunder, James. Um, and I get it as an EV owner and a hybrid owner. I prefer my hybrid over the EV. Uh, the hybrid's up 30% in demand in the last year. Um, of note, you and I have done many, many reports and stories for Cron in the past few years about how automakers like Ford and General Motors and Stellantis want to be all electric vehicle by 2030 or 2035 in California. And that's just simply not going to happen, James. Wow. Okay. Well, okay. All right. Um, Don't be depressed. No, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, before we go, um, and I'm just throwing a curveball at you, so I'm sort of using this sort of as a, a preface for maybe tomorrow. There was a headline today, and I did a little, um, I watched a little video on this a while back on microreactors.
these small micro sort of nuclear reactors that are starting to come up in these startups. It looks like some Sam Altman um, is just breaking ground on the startup he's got to do this in Idaho. And I think this might be a trend going forward as part of our energy mix in America. So I'd like to pick your brain about that. Down Nuclear stocks have been hot and sexy in the past month for the exact reasons you're bringing up. Ah. AI needs a lot of electricity, and we have a shortage of electricity in the United States. So I'll, I'll work on that for you tomorrow, James. Yeah, absolutely. And just like that, guys, if you've got a topic that you want to chat with Rob about, want him to delve and dig a little deeper into, let him know. He's got his uh, social media handles right there for Facebook and X. You've got his email as well at rob at robblack.com.